This video contains solutions to sample problems relating to sections 3.1 on integration by parts. So for this first problem, we've got a pretty standard integration by parts problem. We have two functions multiplied together. And so what we want to do is use the fact that the integration by parts formula tells us that the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And all we have to do is identify which function should we have be our u and which function should we have be our dv. So typically the way that I suggest thinking about this is you want to make u be a function that gets simpler when you take its derivative and dv be a function that doesn't get too much more complicated when you take its antiderivative. Typically functions tend to get more complicated looking when you take their antiderivatives, so you're looking for something that doesn't get too nasty. So in this case, our choices are x and cosine x. So one of those is gonna go here, and one of those is going to go here. If I take the derivative of x, I get one, which is simpler than x. If I take the antiderivative of x, I get one half x squared, which is more complicated than x. But cosine, if I take its derivative or antiderivative, I basically get the same thing. I either get sine or negative sine. So by that logic, I should make x be my u and dv be my cosine x dx. So I take the derivative of u to get du, which is going to be 1 dx. And I take the antiderivative of v to, uh, dv to get v. That's going to be sine of x. And remember, we don't need the plus c here. Even if we included the plus c, it would end up canceling out in the end, so we just don't need to put it there. So that's good news for us. And now we plug into our integration by parts formula. So it's u times v, x times the sine of x, minus the integral of v du, that's sine of x dx. And now we've transformed our integral into an integral that's easier to do. And in fact, all we have to do is find the antiderivative of sine of x, which is negative cosine of x. Subtracting negative cosine of x gives us plus cosine of x, and so that's our antiderivative. All right, next up, again, pretty similar problem. We've got two functions. We've got x and e to the 4x. So one of those needs to be our u. One of those needs to be our dv. The exponential function, similar to the trigonometric functions, basically stay the same if we take their derivative or antiderivative. The derivative of e to the 4x is 4 e to the 4x. The antiderivative of e to the 4x is 1 fourth e to the 4x. Those are all basically the same except for a constant multiple. But x gets easier if you take its derivative and more complicated if you take its antiderivative. So that's the one that we should make be the one that we're going to take the derivative of to get an easier integral. And then the exponential function will take the antiderivative of that. So we get du is 1 dx. And v, as I said before, is the antiderivative of e to the 4x, 1 fourth e to the 4x. So we have uv, so that's x times 1 fourth e to the 4x u v minus the integral of v du. So this will be minus the integral of 1 fourth e to the 4x dx. So this is 1 fourth x e to the 4x. And that 1 fourth we can pull out and we take the antiderivative of e to the 4x, we'll get another factor of 1 fourth. That'll give us 1 16th e to the 4x plus c. And we're done. All right, this one's a little bit more complicated, but it's pretty similar to the first problem that we did. Again, we've got two functions, x squared and sine of x, and similarly to what we did in the first problem, we're going to make the polynomial part, the x squared, be our u, and the trig part be our dv. x squared turns into 2x when we take its derivative, but it turns into x cubed, which is sort of a higher power, more complicated if we take its antiderivative, so this is the way that we want to do it. Our du is 2x dx. Our v is the antiderivative of sine of x, which is negative cosine of x. So our integral becomes uv, so that's minus x squared cosine x, minus the integral of v du, so that's minus 2x cosine x dx. Minus a minus is a plus. So now our integral has transformed into integrating 2x cosine x dx. Now that's not an integral that we can just do, but it is easier than the integral that we started with because 2x basically is replacing the x squared that we have. So this is an example where we're going to need to use parts again to make the integral even simpler. But we're going to choose our parts in the same way. And this is a good rule of thumb. If you're ever doing parts multiple times, continue choosing your parts in the same way. If I chose my parts the opposite way, what would happen is I would get back to my original integral and that's not going to get me anywhere. So I chose the polynomial to be my u, so I'm going to choose the polynomial part to be my u again. I chose the trig to be my dv, so I'm going to make the trig be my dv again. du is the derivative of 2x, that's 2dx. v is the antiderivative of cosine x, that's sine of x. 
So we still have this x squared cosine x hanging around. Don't forget about that. But this integral becomes uv, the new u and the new v, 2x cosine x minus the integral of v du. So that's 2 sine x dx. And now the integral that we have is just the integral of sine of x, which is one that we can do. We can pull out that factor of 2. The antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, so that minus turns into a plus, 2 cosine x plus c. And now we're done. All right, this is a different kind of example because on the face of it, it doesn't necessarily look like an integration by parts formula. We only have one function, just the natural log of x. But it turns out that this is an example using integration by parts. And it's something that we sometimes call parts with only one part. It's a type of example that is important to recognize when you see it. So in this case, our u, the thing we're gonna take the derivative of, is the natural log of x. And our dv is just the number one dx. So we're going to take the derivative of natural log of x and get 1 over x dx, and the antiderivative of 1 is x. So this is going to give us u times v, so x times the natural log of x, minus the integral of v du. So that's x times 1 over x dx. And so we're taking the antiderivative of 1 with respect to x. And the antiderivative of 1, that's just x. So this turns into x times the natural log of x minus x plus c. So a little bit of a tricky problem because it doesn't immediately look like it's an integration by parts problem, but as it turns out, it is. All right, how about this one? x times e to the x squared. So this might look pretty similar to the second example that we did, number two, but actually this isn't integration by parts at all. Watch what happens when we try to use integration by parts. So again, we look at this and we might think, oh, there's two functions, x and e to the x squared. Well, I can't take the antiderivative of e to the x squared. There's no way to do that. So if I'm going to use integration by parts here, then e to the x squared, that has to be my u because there's no simple deriv antiderivative there. And then dv would have to be x dx. Now I can apply the integration by parts formula. That's what's a little bit tricky about parts is that there's nothing stopping you from using it. It just doesn't always help. So if I take the derivative of e to the x squared, I get e to the x squared, and then by the chain rule, multiply that by 2x dx. And then the antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. So integration by parts would tell me that this is 1 half x squared times e to the x squared minus the integral of v du. And if I put all that together, I get x cubed times e to the x squared. Now, if I compare that to the integral that I started with, it looks like things are getting worse. I had x times e to the x squared, and now I have x cubed times e to the x squared. This is not getting better. And so an important skill to build here is to recognize when the method that you're trying to apply isn't working. So that means we're gonna stop and we're gonna try something else. So in this case, what could we do instead? Well, we could use a simpler method. And in fact, what we need to do is not integration by parts, but a substitution. We're just gonna set u equal to that x squared. du is 2x dx. And we might recognize that this x that we need to make our substitution work is exactly this x that's sitting in our integral. We just need a factor of two. And we can get that as long as we put a 1 half out front to balance it. So we get 1 half, we get e to the u du. And then the antiderivative of e to the u is e to the u. We substitute back in, we get 1 half e to the x squared plus c, and we're done. So even though integration by parts is this powerful tool that we've learned how to use, it doesn't apply to every situation. So we have to be careful and make sure we only use it when it's actually necessary. All right, here's another example. This one is an integration by parts example, but it's a little bit different than the ones that we've seen before. Because if we look at these two functions, these are both types of functions that we've talked about where they basically stay the same if you take the derivative or the antiderivative. Neither one of them is an obvious choice for u or for dv. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sort of arbitrarily just choose one of them to be u and one of them to be dv. The way that I would approach this problem is I would make the sine of 2x be my u because when I take the derivative, I'm just going to get a factor of 2 versus taking the antiderivative, which would give me a factor of one half. I'd rather avoid fractions, so choosing my parts this way allows me to avoid the fractions. So my du is cosine of 2x times 2 dx by the chain rule, 
and then v is just going to be e to the x. Now we're going to see why this is important a little later on. I'm going to give this integral a name. I'm going to call this i. So i is the integral that we're trying to figure out. All right, now parts tells me that this is u times v, so e to the x times the sine of 2x. Let me fix that. Sine of 2x minus the integral of v du. I've got a factor of 2, and then I've got e to the x times the cosine of 2x. Now, remember what I said earlier about looking at what you get after you apply integration by parts and asking yourself whether things are getting better or getting worse. And what we see here is that things really aren't getting better or worse. They're basically staying the same. All we've done is we've exchanged our sine for a cosine. But that might lead us to think, well, wait a second. If I do this again and choose my parts in the same way, then I'll get back to sine, and maybe I'll be able to manipulate this equation that I get and figure out what my original integral is supposed to be. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to use parts again. And again, because we chose to use the trig function for u and the exponential function for dv, it's important that we choose those parts the same way again. If we chose the parts in the opposite way, all we would do is get back to the original integral with everything canceling out, and that's not what we want. So we're going to take the derivative of cosine of 2x. That's going to give us negative 2 sine of 2x. And then the antiderivative of e to the x is, again, e to the x. So we have e to the x sine of 2x minus 2 times a whole bunch of stuff. All right, so it's u times v, e to the x, cosine 2x, minus the integral of v du. We've got a negative sign already, and so minus a minus is going to give us a plus. The integral of 2 e to the x, sine of 2x. And so what we should notice here, dx, what we should notice here is that this integral here, because of that 2 there, that's 2i. Right, i was this integral, and notice that we're back to the exact same integral, just with a factor of 2. So if we multiply this out, we get e to the sine of 2x, or e to the x times the sine of 2x, minus 2 e to the x, cosine of 2x, and then minus 4i, minus 2 times the 2 that we already had. And that's what i equals, right? We started with i equals in the beginning, so we still have i equals, which means 5i equals, if we add 4i to both sides, 5i is e to the x sine of 2x minus 2e to the x cosine of 2x plus c. We divide both sides by, by 5. We get that the integral that we were looking for is 1 fifth times all that stuff, e to the x sine of 2x minus e to the 2e uh, to the x cosine of 2x. And then again, plus c. So we just covered carry on the plus c the whole way through. And that is our antiderivative. So this is an example where we had to use parts multiple times, so similar to number three that we talked about earlier, but one where we end up getting the same integral and then we have to solve for that integral. So a little bit different, but this is the kind of thing that happens when you have an exponential function multiplied by a trig function. So when you recognize this kind of structure, exponential multiplied by a trig, this is the kind of approach we want to take. All right, a couple more examples. This is another example of parts with only one part. We talked about that earlier. Parts with only one part. We've just got this inverse tan function, so we're going to make that be our u. And our dv is just going to be dx. So du, that's the derivative of inverse tan, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And the antiderivative of 1, right? Think of there being a 1 in there. The antiderivative of 1 is just x. So we get u times v, so x times inverse tan of x, minus the integral of v du, so that'll be x divided by 1 plus x squared dx. Now what do we do with this integral that we ended up with? The inverse trig went away, so that should make us happy, right? We don't have the crazy inverse trig function anymore, so that's obviously meaning that our integral is getting better, at least it seems like it is. And so what do we do? We're going to do a substitution. We're going to let u equal 1 plus x squared, du is going to be 2x dx. We've got an x in the top of our fraction. We're just missing the 2. So we can put in the 2 as long as we also put in a 1 half. So we get x times inverse tan of x minus 1 half times the integral of 1 over u du, making sure that we're being careful to understand which u we're talking about, right? So this u is this u, not this u up here. So we get x times the inverse tan of x minus 1 half 
times the natural log of absolute value of u plus c. And let's put back in what u was, x inverse tan of x minus 1 half natural log of 1 plus x squared plus c. And that's our answer. All right, one more very similar to the problem that we just did, at least on the face of it. This time it's not parts with only one part because we can see two functions here, x and then inverse tan of x. We can't take the antiderivative of inverse tan. Well, I mean, we can, we just did, but we don't want to because that's not going to give us a nice integral for our integration by parts formula. So the inverse tan should be our u, and then the dv is going to be x. That's got, it will get a little bit more complicated when you take its antiderivative, but hopefully not too bad. The big advantage of parts here is that taking the derivative of inverse tan gets rid of the inverse trig function completely at the cost of having to introduce a higher power of x when we figure out our v. So we have v times u or u times v, 1 half x squared inverse tan of x minus the integral of v du. So that's a 1 half, which I'm going to go ahead and put out front, x squared divided by 1 plus x squared. Now what do we do with x squared divided by 1 plus x squared? It's a little bit tricky. A substitution isn't going to work here because if we let u equal 1 plus x squared, we just need a 2x, but we have an x squared. So we're going to have an extra x left over and we're not going to really be able to deal with that. So the trick here is to do something tricky, is to do some algebraic trickery, as I like to call it. I'm going to add one to my numerator and I'm also going to subtract one from my numerator. So I've added one and I've subtracted one. So I haven't really done anything. I haven't cheated. I haven't broken the math laws. And so what does that give me? So we've got 1 half x squared inverse tan of x out front. That's just going to get carried along while we work on this integral. So I'm going to break this up into two separate integrals. I've got the integral of 1 plus x squared divided by 1 plus x squared, and then minus 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. Now this, that's just 1. And the antiderivative of 1 is x. So we get 1 half x squared inverse tan of x minus 1 half x. And then this over here, that's the derivative of inverse tan. And so if we take the antiderivative, we get inverse tan of x. Now we had a minus and a minus, so this is going to be a plus. And we also had this factor of 1 half, which carries through. So there's going to be a factor 1 half here. And that is our answer. So a lot of these problems involved integration by parts. They didn't all, but a lot of them did. And even the ones that involved integration by parts, a lot of them also involved other things. They involved regular substitutions or algebraic tricks. So we need to think about our full bag of tools that we have to approach integrals and integration. And integration by parts is just one of the tools that we have available to us.